When Will Smith jumped on the stage last Sunday evening at the Oscars presentation, I have to say I thought it was a part of the shtick. I thought it was something was going on here that uh, was a part of the pre presentation, and then suddenly, pow! And I understood that it clearly wasn't. And then he continued to shout, no, really, curse at Rick Chris Rock. And I don't know about you or any, anyone else here that might have seen that, either on the news or live, but I was uncomfortable even watching it. I mean, I'm not even there. I got no investment in any of this, and yet I could feel my body tighten up. Because here's the thing, nothing in life, nothing any of us do is ever just about us. When we think it's just about us, then we've reached a point of being selfish. Because every act, you know, what is it? Every action has a reaction. I mean, it immediately has effect on others, whether we want it to and intend it to or think about it or not. Uh, you know, an example last Sunday would be in that when this was done, of course, Twitter lit up. Twitter provided fodder for unproductive talk that has transpired and continued all week. You know, everybody's got an opinion, right? You don't have to know the facts, you don't have to know the backstory, but all of a sudden we're all experts. And I, uh, you know, there were judgments about individuals, these individuals in particular, and their behavior. And it's sad to see how quickly people reveal themselves, uh, because some were blatantly based. In this case, the reactions uh, revealed uh, prejudice. They're based on race. You know, more than once this past week, I've heard people, either as I waited in line to buy groceries or get coffee, I've heard people say, well, you know, that's just how those people do those things. And even one of the subsequent presenters of awards said, well, uh, something to the effect, I didn't know that we were filming in the hood tonight. And thinking to myself, <laughs> How do, what do you know about the hood, right? These are all stereotypes and assumptions and things we got from somewhere else. But the vitriol, no matter what, the vitriol of that moment cast dispersion broadly. I mean, think of the effects that it had. All the airtime that it received. And it gave those people who wish to feed on negative stereotypes or individuals who want to be emboldened so that they can increase the cultural divides that we already know exist, like it. But it's sad because it robs, it robs those who worked hard and those who watched of what it should have been, and that's a celebration of individuals and their personal talents. It was Woody Allen who once upon a time, a few years back, took a phrase we all know about art and life, and he stated it in this faction. He said, life doesn't imitate art, it imitates bad TV. <laughs> well, this was a case of bad TV. Which left me asking, what's next? You know, these things never happen and go away. It seems like they free us up for worse behavior down the road. And in my own mind's eye, it seems to me that society has been headed in this kind of direction for a number of years. As we've become accustomed and accepting of sinking to the lowest common denominator, and being okay with it, rather than challenging one another to seek and reach the highest common denominator we have as, well, for us, people of faith and children of God. You know, remember Columbine? Remember Columbine? Remember how shocked we were at Columbine? It's almost a weekly occurrence now. And we just kind of accept it as a part of our culture's life.
We live in a time when nothing and no one is off limits. And I understand that public figures, myself included, public figures legally exist in the public domain and therefore are fair game. But what, do we have no compassion for one another? Do we assume that people who dare to step up and step out have no feelings, no emotions? Did we leave our humanity at the door? You know, in this regard, I feel for Will Smith and his, his wife. You know, I don't know the backstory between the, uh, the two, uh, you know, the two actors and what was going on. I just know what I've been told. But I know that she has some kind of illness that causes a loss of hair. And that was uh, the basis or the point of the joke directed at her. But I have to tell you that um, I take that personally too. Because as a person who has a disability, you are always aware of that no matter where you go. And there's always in the back of your mind that notion that they're looking at you differently or thinking about it differently and so when a joke is made about a person with that kind of condition we all go down we all do I understand that uh, it's over 50% of uh, citizens in this country suffer from some disability. You know, you have cataracts or, or you know, have had knee surgery. Uh, if it's 50% nationally, it's probably about 95% in Florida. <laughs> right? You know, even setting aside, you know, uh, because this is not a political statement, but when Donald Trump, as a candidate, made fun of that reporter and his disability, I was done. There's just nothing funny or humane. And people laughed. When did it become acceptable to laugh at the cost of ridiculing others? We forget, as the uh, passages in Proverbs say, words not only cut and words not only maim, words kill. And when we permit verbal assaults to just go on and we laugh at them and feed them and they grow, they eventually bloom and explode into physical attacks. That is the outcome, no matter what we, we think. They don't just go away. They don't go away as children are bullied, students are shot, and an award-winning actor feels free to assault in front of God and country a professional colleague. It's inevitable. You know, it's, I find it ironic that uh, actors portray characters and we give standing ovations, right? But no one applauds for people who display character. I don't even think we expect it anymore. In fact, we live in an age that people seem to gravitate toward those who build very successful careers by intentionally displaying no character and mocking those who do. Mocking those who do. You know, some here are old enough, and I want to emphasize that. Some of you are old enough. I was very, 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 very young. But I recall how shocked the nation was when the White House tapes were released of President Nixon and people heard him swear. Do you remember that? Talk of the town. Today, such talk holds no shock value whatsoever. None. And I, and I know this is all, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I, I get all that. I'm, I'm not ridiculous. But it, it has become so common that it seems to me that we debase each other. And here's the real critical thing. If adults get a pass on acting this way, how can we hold children up to a different standard? You know, one of the commandments says that the sins of the parents are passed on to the third and fourth generation of those who follow them. You see, the rabbit hole just gets deeper and darker to the point there is no return. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 
10 and 11, Jesus, it's recorded Jesus said this. He says to those in the crowd, the disciples, the Pharisees, all that are gathered around him, he says, now listen to me and take this to heart. It's not what you swallow that pollutes your life, it's what you vomit up. Well, frightened, later in the day, the disciples came back to him and they said, Jesus, you know, the Pharisees heard that and they were pretty upset. You should be careful. And the scripture says, Jesus shrugged it off and he said, forget them. They are blind, leading the blind. And when the blind lead the blind, all they do is end up in a ditch together. That is, again, a translation from the message. Now, I'm not foolish enough to think things are likely to change, but they can cease from becoming even worse. Because we don't have to listen, we don't have to laugh, we don't have to watch any of it, whether it's on television or it's our next door neighbor, we have the power to turn it off. We aren't required to engage or uh, even give our presence uh, to uh, those who would act this way, and we aren't required uh, to like every individual who rules over us, but neither do we have the right to just denigrate and put them down. Respect. Respect needs to be earned. It's not simply given. And those who have no character, in my opinion, they have no right to dictate or to preach to others about values and morals when they are not willing to display any of their own. But rather than letting it slide, it becomes our responsibility some way to say, it's enough, I don't want to hear it anymore, and I'm not going to be a part of it. Ecclesiastes writes, for everything there is a time and there is a season. And as every person in Florida, at least a transplant to Florida knows, if you don't like the seasons where you are, what do you do? You pack up and you move. If there is ever to be a return to decency, courtesy, respect, mutual care, concern, and understanding, the season we are in will only change if we decide it's time to move. So, the only thing that remains is the question that says, uh, what are we allowing to hold us back? Amen.